Hi, hello, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to show you or take you along, okay, let's try not to break anything, uh, take you along a shelf tour. So these are not really necessarily bookshelves, there are books on them, but there's also like fabric and supplies and just decorations. So I thought I would just like share with you because I love these shelves. They're a little bit messy right now which maybe would make you think that it's a bad idea to film this video today. And you know, mess is a part of life and it's part of having something that you use on a daily basis. So here is my bookshelves without further ado. So this is the top shelf on the right side, which you don't probably see in videos very often. And this little tub, which contains like glue and my glue gun and my acrylic paints and other supplies of that kind of nature. And then on this one, I have all of like my stationery for pen paling, so I have some paper and envelopes, and I used to have stamps and stuff in here, but uh, that kind of got out of hand, and I had to move them somewhere else. Uh, then over here, I have these envelopes, which currently hold the thing that I'm doing with my pen pals, which is called, or I've named, Quarantine Mail. Basically, I write them a letter every week, um, telling them about, like, my week, I guess, and I'm gonna send it to them when I'm no longer in quarantine, hopefully. Uh, then I have a little uh, super glue thing here the, for something that I need to glue. Uh, this here in this box is my wax seal stamp thing uh, set, so that was a gift from a friend. This is more stationary, and back here is more like stationary. And this box that I can't remember what is in there. It's a bunch of like cute animal erasers. Moving on down to this shelf, basically it's memorabilia, I guess. This box contains all the letters that my friends have written me or um, like birthday cards and things like that. This little hedgehog was mine as a, as a kid, like growing up and I really love it, so I keep it here. Then there's a Rubik's Cube back there, I don't know why. Uh, these are some like stones, gemstones that people have gifted me. And back there is like important documents. Then we're gonna jump over one because that's my boyfriend's and yeah. In this shelf I have a little bit of a mess. So I have some like other stationery. So there is like paper and parchment paper and just like little notebooks and things. Then there's my Japanese book that I'm slowly, slowly learning from. Uh, there's like more books and notebooks and things. Uh, then I have some tissue paper that I use for packaging orders. And here I have a box of like random things like jars and things that I might use to put stuff away. So I just keep that in this little basket and I have like a little bag and I don't know, all sorts of things that I might use eventually. I don't know. Moving on to the drawer, the shelf under that. My coloring book. Another coloring book. Some like instructions for my camera and things like that. Uh, and then some little notebooks. Little notebooks. Okay, that just fell. Little notebooks. Little notebooks. I have a lot of notebooks, okay. And like old um, bullet journals and things like that. This was a package of crisps that I got from Japan. Not that I've been to Japan, but like I got on a like a food crate thing. So I thought the, the packet was really cool and I might use it for something in the future. So I kept it here. Uh, and this is the same thing. Again, packaging from Japan, which you were meant to cut down. And it was this cute little koala in a ghost costume and I just thought it was so cute. Under that, which is basically the floor, I have my paper shredder, some like other notebooks and things like materials that might need like binders and things like that. I have my medical folder and on the floor, what you see there is not really a proper storage, but basically this is spare parchment that I use for uh, patterns for clothing. This is a uh, spare paper that I use sometimes for stuffing things and like for photos and stuff. Uh, and then that over there, sorry I'm using my foot, I don't want to get kneeled down. <laughs> uh, 
that over there in the corner is my like tiny fabric scraps and those are for like little cuttings when I'm sewing and stuff and those are for um, like filling things in like cushions and plush toys and things like that and those are all pieces that I can't like use the there's not enough fabric to use for something else at the right at the top 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 of my bookshelves where it's not even a bookshelf anymore I have like wrapping paper that I keep there just in case I need to wrap something like Christmas wrapping paper and stuff and on this side I didn't show you but that's where I keep the case for my typewriter then this shelf is uh, fabric obviously and these are like wool blends and like wools and winter jerseys and things like tartans and stuff that I don't use that I'm not using right now because they're too hot but I will probably use in the winter so they, I've moved them up here because they're like a little bit out of the way then this shelf at eye level is a lot of things let me show you so here I have all of my like linens and I think it's called Ada. I don't know if that's like how you pronounce it, but like cross stitching fabric that has like the little holes in it. So I have different like thread counts and squares per inch or whatever, how it is called. And yeah, some linens and stuff. Then this is a finished bag that I showed you in my last video. At the back, I have a little postcard that my mom gave me. Uh, then I have this Ikea like shelf thingy. Up here normally live my cotton threads for embroidery and cross stitching. And then these little uh, thingies are for my embroidery hoops. Then in this little box that was up there, I have some more thread. This is a different kind of cotton thread. It's the one that is just one count. So you don't have multiple threads in one as you do with the like DMC anchor threads for embroidery where you have six threads in each. This is a needlepoint um, thing that I'm kind of not really working on but it was just for me to try needlepoint <laughs> so I have this going here. Then this is where I keep like tiny pieces of cross stitching fabric that I can still use for little tiny things but not for small things anymore so I just keep it here so I'm not throwing it away and I can reuse that uh, and then normally I also have another box like that which has like wool thread that I use for embroidery and for like tapestry and stuff in here I have uh, some full like cotton thread what do you call these they have a name but I can't remember anyway I have a bunch of them in here that I intend on putting in my like normal box that I'm of what I'm using but these are like extras that I have and then this little pencil case that I also made has some thread that I was using for a project and like normally there's scissors or whatever in here but I'm using a different one right now this shelf here has some shells that I've picked up at beaches and things then it has a little tank where my shrimp live I don't know if you knew I have shrimp I used to have fish and I had these little shrimp that were supposed to clean the tank but all my fish died and all my shrimp lived and they kind of love a neglected tank where there's a lot of algae for them to eat so that's what that is we also have like live plants like these are real plants um, and it's just here like a little ecosystem then there's this little postcard that a friend sent me that says hello sunshine then there's this up here that's not supposed to live here it's like a clip for your cardigan or whatever from the 50s this little box has small zippers basically just a lot of zippers in here um, and I built a little partition that's sort of not working but you know whatever it's fine so I have a partition so on this side I have invisible zippers and on this side I have regular zippers in here I don't have anything but I just like the tin so it lives here the, in this tin I have big zippers so if I can get that open big zippers some of them are reused from things that I took apart and that I wasn't gonna wear anymore so those live in here and this tin is kind of a Christmas themed one and in here I have rice it's really good for filling hand warmers because you can put them in the microwave and they warm up your hands so whenever I make warm hand warmers in the winter I have that here just to be easier so I don't have to go to the kitchen all the time then I have this little pear-shaped um, jar thing that 
I inherited from my grandmother and in here I have all my uh, sewing machine needles. So I have needles for my normal sewing machine and for my serger so I have a bunch of them in here. In this little box I have a bunch of tools for my sewing machines as well. So there's like different um, sewing machine feet and like I don't know, other things that I might need for it and tools and stuff. In this little tin, I have a bunch of like tiny Ziploc bags that I use for like packaging small things or extra beads and stuff. Like when I sell things that are beaded, I always add a little uh, Ziploc bag with extra beads so that if some beads fall off, the person can sew them back on. So that's what I have there. Then I have a little figurine of Elsa that I got from a Kinder Easter Kinder Egg uh, that my boyfriend got me. Then that's a decorative plate that I brought from Ikea that I really like. I used to have like a, de um, a decorative plate wall in my old house but I haven't found a place for them in this house yet, but this one lives here. And on the box that they're standing on, I just have batteries. This next shelf is home to my typewriter. Leather bag that my dad got me last year, which was an old bag where the man who worked for the phone companies in Spain would have all their tools and stuff in these bags. So I have one of these. This whole mess is some more like unfinished cross-stitching project that I'm kind of slowly working on. This little kitten hand handbag, which will eventually be finished, so. Yeah, and then in this little box that is super pretty, hand-painted, I brought this from Cuba when I visited when I was like eight. And in here, I have all my part pattern weights. So these are just some that I made recently. Uh, and these are like my favorite ones that I also handmade, but are like cute donuts. Uh, and I have these as well that I also made, but uh, they don't fit in the box and I've been like thinking about where I want to put them, but until the, where I decide, they live here. <laughs> this shelf of shame, basically uh, this is my mom's birthday gift, so it's just living there until I go and see her for her birthday. Under that is a bunch of interfacing, so that's normally where interfacing lives, I'm kind of running low, which is why the pile is so low. And then on this side is fabrics that I still have to iron and fold <laughs> into like my normal fabric pile, but my normal fabric pile is so high that they don't really fit. So they've just kind of been living like that. Again, uh, a binder of like documents that normally doesn't live here, but I haven't had the patience to bring out the step stool to put, to put them the binder in where it actually lives. And this is where I keep all of my like packaging for shipping stuff for Etsy orders. So I have like big envelopes there and smaller envelopes here. Then I have a lot of like paper and more wrapping stuff. So like ribbons and things like that. Under that I have recycled packaging that I use for like friends and family and stuff. I have my business cards under here, which you can't see, but they're there. And then that box, it doesn't look that big, but it is pretty big, is all of my fabric scraps that I can use for other things, but haven't got around to. So, the very top of my bookshelf here, here I have all the boxes of my Pop Funko collection. Those are the ones that I have currently. And then in the little boxes here on the side, I have my Christmas fabric stash. And then I have my mini Funko collection, which features a bunch of Harry Potter Funkos, but I have like the two calendars from Pop Funko that have come out. I got both of them and I don't have enough shelf space to put them all so they live up there and then I like switch them out as I feel like it. On this side here this beautiful thing is a little book nook that I made then next to that this box here and this towel is like my nail stuff so I have my nail polishes and nail supplies there so that's why there's a towel there. Then this is Nate the Narwhal, which is a little plush that I made, and he's for sale in my Etsy shop if you ever want to get him. Uh, so he lives up there until somebody takes him home. Uh, then you can't see it, but I have a walking stick here that I've been meaning to redo, but haven't got around to. And this little basket is where I keep my label maker. I have a clock back there, as you can see, and this is the paint that I'm gonna use for that walking stick when I get around to it. This one right in front of us is like one of the nicest ones, I guess. This space here is cleared because I wanted the book nook to live here, but I didn't measure properly, so it's like slightly too big and it doesn't fit. In here, I have some books and some other things. I have Moonshine, 
Then I have Descender Volume 1. I want to continue with it, but I haven't got around to buying anymore. Then I have my Sailor Moon collection. I have Volumes 1 through 6. Then I have one of these little guys that has my um, handle on it. Uh, and this is just for like the backgrounds of videos and things like that. Then I have a little candle, which is run out, but I really like the jar. And it says, do what makes you awesome. And I like that. So that lives back here. Um, then I have a little cross stitch thing that my mom got me which has an O on it and we have this thing because my name is really unusual. Uh, normally you can never find things with my name on it in like markets and things like that. So whenever she finds something with my name on it she buys it even if it's like ugly and not really my style uh, because it's just like a running joke that we have that there's never anything with my name on it. So that's why that's there. Then this is a picture of my dog Zeus in my old house in my old kitchen. Uh, and he's just such a good boy and I love this photo and I keep it here because it reminds me of him and I like it. Uh, then this little plate, again same story as the cross stitch back there. This little basket is where I keep all of your book submissions for the Foggy Book Club, which by the way is back and you can follow it on Instagram and stuff like that. I will leave all that stuff in the description of the video and you can leave more submissions if you like for things for us to read. This is Beth the Bear. It's another plush that I need. Uh, I really love her and she has a walking stick for whenever she needs it. She doesn't need it all the time. She needs it sometimes. So whenever she needs it, it's there. Then I have a little pile of books. This one is a sewing like instruction manual, I guess, from Kath Kitston. Then this book is Basic Book Binding, which is a vintage book that my sister and brother-in-law bought me for like two Christmases ago. Then there's a book called Zoology, and it is a very, very, very old book of actually human biology that was taught at schools and universities here in Portugal like a long, long time ago. Then I have a book about uh, embroidery and different kinds of lacing from Portugal and this was taught at schools in like the 70s. So this was like a school book from the 70s about embroidery and stuff and for girls who were studying it. Uh, and it was like the school approved book, like the ministry approved book. And this was during fascist dictatorship that we had uh, that ended in the 70s. And it's very interesting to read because there's a lot of fascism in there. Uh, then I have a little Edwardian Lady Diary from 1989, which is completely blank, but has really cute pictures and like drawings and stuff, so I really like that. Uh, and then I have uh, Ken Kiyosha's uh, New Little Japanese to English Dictionary, so that's pretty self-explanatory, also vintage. Uh, and then in this little box, which is also a really cool uh, box that's actually been damaged a little bit, but it, a friend of mine gave it to me. Um, who is half Chinese and this is like a Chinese box and in here I have the letters that are left over from this sign. Um, I used to keep like better more th useful things in here but when it started getting damaged I stopped using it as often just so I could preserve it longer so that's why it has like unimportant things in there and this little old peanut butter jar has these these clips that I made um, like years and years ago and I think they're really cute but I don't know what to use them for but I think they're really cute so I don't want to throw them out so they just live in here. Uh, and then at the very edge here you can't see it but there's a map of an island of Japan which again is vintage and I just love like vintagey things here and I use it often for like the backgrounds of photos and things like that. Get ready for the Harry Potter goodness. I'm gonna start from this side just because I feel like it. So this is the Hogwarts, A Guide to Hogwarts, uh, and it's a pop-up book from the movies. So it's all like you can build uh, and pop up all of the sets and things like that and from the movies. It's a really, really cool book. Then I have my two um, Harry Potter books from the um, Hufflepuff editions. So I have the Philosopher's Stone and I have the... Uh, Chamber of Secrets. I haven't bought the other ones yet and I'm not sure if I'm going to buy them because of this whole like J.K. Rowling thing. I don't know, but I have those two. Then I have my original Harry Potter books, which is the Bloomsbury edition. Um, I think it was like a 15 year uh, celebratory uh, edition and I really, really love them. I got a, a box set. I still have the box. 
So these were the first books that I've read. Uh, so I have all of them here. Yeah. Then I have this collection of um, the extra books from J.K. Rowling's like Hogwarts thingies. I don't know what they're called. The collection is called. Sorry. So I have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, The Tales of Beetle the Bard, and Quidditch Through the Ages. So I have that and also got that as box set. And then I have The Tales of Beetle the Bard, which was actually, I got this before I had these ones. This was a gift from my parents for my birthday like two years ago. And it's like a really special edition, collector's edition, and I love it a lot. And I just treasure it and I'm really happy that I have it. And this was actually bought secondhand, so that's nice to not be supporting we know who. You know who. She who must not be named. <laughs> then I have my two books of Fantastic Beasts. I have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, The Screenplay, and The Crimes of Grindelwald. I have a mini Crookshanks, which is so cute. Then I have Fred and George. I have a Ron on his broomstick. I love this Funko so much. Then I have Harry in his Herbology outfit, which I really love as well. That was a gift from my boyfriend. Uh, then I have Lockhart in his pink robes. I really want him in blue robes, but this is the only one I could find at the time. Uh, I got this in Comic-Con last year. I really like him as well. Uh, this was one of my first Funkos, and it's Dumbledore uh, with his wand. Then I have Newt Scamander with Pickett, and this is actually a pretty rare Funko, so I got that for, for Christmas as well from my boyfriend like a few years ago. Uh, and then I have Luna, Lovegood. I also got that at Comic-Con and is also my first... One of my first Funkos and it's her and her lion headdress and it's like my favorite Funko ever probably. Like I love her so much and I'm so happy to have her. Up here I have McGonagall. I have a little figurine of Hedwig that lights up. That was a gift from, oh my god. It's all going down. I was trying to show you that I have um, Moaning Myrtle but she lives right at the back because she's so annoying. So she's just like lingering there. Anyway. So Hedwig's figurine, that was a gift from my friend uh, for Christmas as well. Then I have Hagrid with his, um, uh, his umbrella. I have um, Madame Maxine, uh, Nearly Headless Nick, uh, Dobby, obviously. He's holding a sock. It's adorable. Then down here, I have a Thestral. Behind Luna, I have a um, Sweet Treats Honey Dukes candle from Primark. And I kept the candle lid because I thought it was cute. It looks like something from Honey Dukes, and I got two candles at the time, and I kept the packaging of one, and the other one I just kept the tin, uh, and that one is a sherbet lemon, which is very cute. Behind that, I have a London to Hogwarts ticket that I also got from Primark. I have Neville and Ginny and Luna in her, with her quibbler and her spectrospects. She's so freaking cute. Okay, now I have her. Then I have Draco over there. I have another one of those figurines that light up, which is Hagrid's. I got that one at a Comic-Con as well. Then I have Ron, Harry, and Hermione. Then up here I have Mad-Eye Moody. I have Filch with his cat in his lap. Um, I have Remus Lupin and Snape in his Yule Ball robes. Moving on down, here we have another shelf which is a little bit of a mess but like an organized mess okay let me take you through these are some books that i find pretty but some of them are christmas themed and stuff and i just like them because i just think they're pretty so they're not living in my normal bookshelf they're living here this is some leftover fabric from this is from a pajama set that i made and this is from a pair of shorts that i made recently you can see those like finished pieces in my last video as well uh, then this is a piece that is left over from a dress I'm making. Then I have this big ass old quilt from my grandma's house that I love so much. I love this fabric so much and I've just been using it for other things for myself. Uh, this is another fabric that I got from my mom and then I have some other ones. These are all vintage I'm pretty sure. Uh, so all of these are like small smaller fabrics. In this basket is where I keep things that I need to mend. So I have this skirt that needs a new zipper, uh, tights that need to be sewn, another skirt that needs a new zipper, and I think a cardigan that needs a button. And then in this box I have yet more embroidery thread. This is like extra 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 colors that I have. Uh, and these uh, live here because either I bought like more than I needed because I was making a project and I didn't know how much I was going to need, or because I bought it secondhand and I just got whatever 
people had and it turned out to be a bunch of the same colors so i have a lot of gray and green to go through moving down we have my fabric stash this is where i keep my proper fabrics that i'm using for cloth making so there's like they have cardboard in between to keep them nice and straight so there's all of this i have some tool i have some cottons i have some like taffeta here i have some like silky kind of fabrics and like polyester uh, i have some oxford i have some linen this is also i think like a silky type of satin finish uh more cotton i'm making a dress out of this actually right now i just need to sew the zipper so normally this box lives in that little corner in that little corner so in this box i have all my elastic and all my like ribbon and things to add on to like appliques and things like that and in this box i have all of my um crochet thread that i don't crochet but it's useful for other things for other crafts and stuff so i just that just lives here here i have all the bow ties that i've made for my dog so or other dogs in case somebody wants to purchase them so they're all for sale in my etsy shop they've never been used <laughs> just in case you're wondering i have this box where i keep like fabric glue and extra safety pins and some sisal string and normally I have like these snap closures for bags so they normally live in here and then I have this other box in there uh, which has belt buckles that I also bought vintage so I can use for making belts if I need it and then I have like printer paper under there moving on to another little shelf that i have next to my desk so up there up here is just a binder like that i'm not using so just i just put it there and kind of forgot about it this shelf has a bunch of beads and like pendants and things like that uh, it also has all my pliers for working jewelry wire and things like that uh, and just like extra beads and things. This one has, again, beads, uh, jewelry wire, like. Then I have this little decorative miniature, like sewing kit, and it's like adorable. Then I have this little, oh my God, that didn't break. Whew. Don't know how that didn't break, but it didn't, so that's great. So this little porcelain thing that was my grandmother's uh, and I have little pom-poms and tassels that I've finished that are up for sale and they just live here. So moving on down. So this is just a book about fashion from Tashin. Uh, then I have this one on dressmaking, which has a lot of really interesting information. Uh, this is a notebook. Let me try to show you. Got a faint outline of people, like models, and so you can draw clothes and stuff. So I have some ideas in here of things I want to make. Then I have a book on pattern making in fashion, a book about making the little black dress. Um, I have the instruction manuals for my sewing machines because sometimes you need to check things and I just like to have them handy. I have some cutouts and things. Uh, this is a pouch that was my grandmother's. I found in her things uh, recently and these are just things that I wanted to keep from her. Then I have this weird cat that I got in like a Happy Meal or something and a little box like for glasses which has a cat in it. On this side I have some really old patterns, magazines, uh, sewing magazines and things from like the 40s and 30s that I keep that are really cool and vintage so I have those there. Then I have some like regular sewing magazines, uh, I have some like Christmas ideas and whatever things like that uh, and then i have these ones which are the ones that i get every month uh which i think they have in most places in europe and things it's like an originally a german magazine it always has like a bunch of patterns and they're always like nice i always can get something out of each magazine and even if i don't like them now i can always look back at them a few years from now and get inspired then i have this little dmc booklet that has a bunch of cross stitching thing ideas this is another weird one basically i just have like my like notebooks that i use on a regular basis i have um like these are some diaries and this is where i keep all my addresses and stuff like that uh, so just important things that i keep then i have some envelopes here that i use for patterns 
to keep patterns safe. And then here is where I have like all my electrical stuff like chargers. This is for my electric blanket. I have like external hard drives, phone cases, like all that stuff lives in here. Next on down, <laughs> sorry. I'm sure you remember my sofa where I used to sit for my videos. Uh, so here I have some boxes of fabric. These are like smaller pieces. I have another one of those here that I've been reorganizing. Um, and under that I have my button collection, which is very, very vast. And a lot of them are vintage, as you can probably see there. They're like vintage button cards. Uh, and I've been trying to organize this collection, but <laughs> it's not going so good. I have another box here that I used recently for something. So that's it. That's my tour of the shelves in my office. So that is everything that I have to show you today. That's everything that I have to talk about. So I'm going to end this video. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to leave it a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not done that already. And if you want, you can consider clicking the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I post a new video because I don't post on a regular schedule. You can also join like Patreon and the book club and whatever shop my etsy store all the good stuff if you want to support me and help me keep making videos that is everything that i have to say thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a wonderful day stay safe out there and i will see you in my next video bye